It took me months to realize that I was experiencing compassion fatigue. And it wasn't until I stopped and found healing that I realized how significantly every area of my life was impacted. Let me save you a few steps and hopefully a few months of hardship and tell you the 10 signs of compassion fatigue that I didn't realize until afterwards. Hey there, my name is Laura, founder of Hope Made Strong, where we equip you and your ministry team to support and care for others. My family was bearing the brunt of my weariness, but I didn't realize I was experiencing compassion fatigue until my work was impacted. At work, I began to avoid clients and even had a sense of dread when I saw their name on my schedule. I would look the part of a caring, compassionate counselor, but my empathy for those struggling was diminishing. Then one day I found myself silencing a client and I was redirecting the meeting to be focused on a less distressing issue as a protective mechanism for myself rather than being focused on the needs of the client. For me, this was the wake up call that I was not well. This shocked me as I have strong values of client care and support. It was then I sought out the support of my supervisor. However, for months, my health, relationships, family, and my well-being were all deteriorating as a result of compassion fatigue that I didn't even realize. So here are 10 signs of compassion fatigue that I have often overlooked and they greatly impacted my life. Number one is forgetfulness. Forgetting to shut off the coffee maker every once in a while, well, that's fairly normal. But my forgetfulness and being distracted moved to a whole different level when I started to miss appointments. I even forgot to pick up my kids from daycare. This is a common sign of compassion fatigue that is often overlooked. Number two, sensitivity to emotionally charged charged stimulus. Welling up with emotion to a movie, again, fairly normal but sobbing at a Marvel movie in the theaters? I don't think so. About six months before going off of work, I found myself unable to stop crying at the trauma experienced by the superheroes. I was embarrassed, but I didn't pay much attention to it. Now looking back, I see that that was a red flag telling me that I was experiencing compassion fatigue. Number three, problems with intimacy. After coming home from working a full day of supporting clients, then caring for my children, and then prepping for the next day, the last thing that I wanted to do was being intimate with my spouse. I was exhausted, and I often thought, just please leave me alone. We didn't have any underlying marital problems, but it was the job that was the problem, and it was completely depleting me of energy. Number four is intrusive imagery. I can remember while on a vacation with my husband, we went for a hike to a top of a cliff. And as we stood there looking out at the beauty, Aaron turned to me and noticed that I was looking distracted. And he asked, what are you thinking? And I casually said that I was wondering how many people have died by suicide by jumping off this cliff. Now, this was obviously disturbing to him, but for me, I thought nothing of it. Number five is cynicism. I found myself becoming more and more cynical of new ideas, whether it was new staff at work wanting to improve staff morale or towards my children's enthusiasm for life. I would go along as a passive participant, but my willingness to be fun or silly was at an all time low. Cynicism is common in high stress environments. And I love what Laura Van Der Newt Limsky writes. She says that cynicism is a sophisticated coping mechanism for dealing with anger and other intense feelings that we don't know how to manage. Number six is reduced ability to feel sympathy for family and friends. I would come home from a work day helping those who are struggling with serious mental illness, addictions, and homelessness and have little to no empathy for the struggles of my friends and family. I was numb and desensitized to what I perceived to be a minor issue. This can have significant implications to relationships. And when I started to have a lower empathy at work with clients, this is when I really started to take notice. Number seven is depression. I distinctly remember if wondering if I was depressed. I, a mental health clinician, was wondering if my inability to find joy, laugh, or have anticipation for an event that I would otherwise be really excited about, if that was a depression. But I brushed it off as a stress response. But looking back, the lowered motivation, the tendency to self-isolate, and the consistent lowered mood were all markers that I was likely experiencing situational depression due to compassion fatigue. 
I'm happy to say that this type of depression is not clinical and longstanding and freedom can be found once the underlying issues are addressed. And in my case, it was the compassion fatigue. Avoiding social events is sign number eight. Thursday nights are my nights out. My kids know it, my husband know it, and I certainly know it. Thursdays, you can find me at book club or run club or just out with the girls. But the deeper I fell into compassion fatigue, it was harder and harder to go out. I lost the motivation to be social and all I wanted was to be home in my comfy clothes, watching a movie or reading a book. I'm naturally extroverted and this was very out of character for me. The shift in behavior and avoidance of social events was a clear indication of compassion fatigue that I had minimized. The next sign is anger and irritability. I often talk about how miserable I was towards my family. Now, I don't know if that's how they would describe me, but looking back, I'm ashamed at how short tempered I was with my children. And I had almost no tolerance of anyone asking me for help. I was sensitive and my fuse was short when life didn't run smoothly. I was able to hold it all together at work despite being increasingly irritated with colleagues and clients, but at home where it was safe, I would often get frustrated with the smallest things like my kids forgetting to take their lunches out of their backpacks. The 10th and final sign is exhaustion. This is a key marker for compassion fatigue. No matter how much rest I got or how much time I was away from work, I had continued to feel exhausted. This one is interesting because although I could recognize and felt the physical exhaustion, I didn't initially realize how emotionally and mentally I was exhausted. So there you have it. Those are the top 10 symptoms of compassion fatigue that deeply impacted my life, but I minimized and overlooked. If you can identify with any of these symptoms, I would encourage you to speak to your doctor and a trusted friend or family. That was my first step in finding healing from compassion fatigue. Also, I invite you to check out my online course called Finding Hope in Helping by going to findinghopeinhelping.org. This is a comprehensive step-by-step -step guide in finding freedom from compassion fatigue. If you found this video helpful and want to be notified when a new video goes live, make sure you push that subscribe button. Thanks and take care.